What do you think of Arnold? I hear like, he heaps of people. Uh, but Arnold's one of those guys, if you know him, like, I mean, he's the jokes, he jokes around. Like, even in the gym, he'd always be putting on people. And I remember once I was doing leg extensions and he lifts up my shorts. He's like, do you really think you need to keep doing that many and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I lifted up his shorts. I went, yeah, I think I do. Yeah. <laughs> and then another time he was standing there with Eddie Giuliani, another good friend of mine. They were just standing there watching me. And I was training, I just stopped and I looked at him and I said, oh, why do I f Bob? They're like, what do you mean? I said, I'm training this hard, I'm doing this and that. I said, but in the end, I'm just going to look like you two f***ing old guys. <laughs> <laughs>Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of The Search. Joining us on the podcast today is a man widely regard, regarded as the greatest bodybuilder to ever come out of Australia. Originally from Newcastle, he began competing at the age of 13, was crowned the IFBB Mr. Australian at 16 years old, before going on to compete on the world stage for decades to come. Making a name for himself for his arms and detailed conditioning, widely known to be the best arms in bodybuilding ever, he was at one point in time banned by the IFBB Pro, still. Well, it was a lifetime ban, yes, yeah, so I guess. So, well, now that the IFBB and they've sort of split directions, yeah. and the guy that banned me isn't with them anymore, maybe. I'm not anymore, but oh, who, maybe, who yeah, knows? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got banned for your brash and outspoken nature and was picked to perform for the body movements for the CGI character of the Hulk in 2003 Eric Banner movie. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's my pleasure to welcome to the search Lee Priest. Thank, Thank you. you, brother. Thank you. Thank you for coming. So you grew up in Newcastle? Yeah, just a little suburb called Walls End. Walls End, just yeah. Probably like 15 minutes from the city of Newcastle itself. So. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, so you, that's still around there till today? Um, in Mayfield East, which is probably, which is right near Newcastle. It's pretty yeah. much the same area. Yeah, yeah same yeah, area. So, yeah, I yeah. drive past Walls End a bit and nothing's changed. Really? <laughs> What's it like growing up there? How, how uh, was your upbringing? Uh, pretty good. I sort of, my mum and dad divorced when I was about three or four because yeah. my mum had discovered my father was gay, but back then she thought she could change him, taking him to oh, church. Oh, that's it. Going to church, they thought she could change him, but no, they separated and then I sort of was living with my mum. I see my dad on the weekends and yeah. then my grandparents also raised me in that too. So yeah, yeah. I'd always tell my dad that, oh, and my mum, but he always get mad at me. I say, you know, you talk about fate and, you know, timing. I just said, imagine if you never met mum at the right time. I said, I could have been wasted on a blowjob or something. So I, was like, <laughs> I could have been spat on the floor in a locker room. I was like, there would have been no Lee Priest. Yeah, true. See, eh? they met at the right time. Aye. Aye, what? That's, that's I could have ended up on bar. Bob's back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, like, your mum was a bodybuilder. Yeah, well, she got into it when I was 17, because when I first got into it, she's like, Oh, you don't want to look like that, do you? Because I originally got into it to look like He-Man. I never yep. got into it to do bodybuilding. Yep, yep, yep. And then when I was 17, I just won the Mr. Australia. She's like, if I get in shape, will you do the couples with me? Because they had couples back then. Mm -hmm. And my mum was sort of overweight. She likes eating like me. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah, you get in shape. I'll do it for sure. So oh, really? eight months later, she got in shape. I'm like, oh, fuck, now I've got to go on stage with my mum. How embarrassing. <laughs> but yeah, we did it together. And we were the first mother and son in the world to compete together and win a couples title. But that's crazy. And we got on the, I didn't know that. Came down to Sydney, went on the Ray Martin midday show and that sort of thing. So that's it. That's going back now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, bye. Hey, boys, before we get started, ladies and gentlemen, uh, today's episode is sponsored by Manscaped. Listen, I'm being legit here. I've been using the Lawnmower 4.0 since I first talked about it. I use it all the time. It's gun, trust me. It doesn't cut you, it doesn't graze you. I don't know how they've done it. It's got a little light on it. It's wireless. It can go in the water. It's a gun razor, trust me. But hey, it comes in packs. They got these little packages, listen, right? Ball toner, ball deodorant. You might have a giggle, but trust me, you, you, your balls need to be toned and they need to be deodorized, right? It's legit, it's a given, it's a no-brainer. Anyway, I've got a deal for you. You use code the search, 20% off. Listen to this, 20% off and free shipping. Use the code the search. Let's see it. Tell them I sent ya. Lawnmower 4.0, best ball clipper there is. You can use it any way you want. Anyway, let's oge. Ray and, <laughs> and, your, and your pop even. I was I, I watched heaps of your videos. And so my said, grandfather, he was he always was in the fitness. It, yeah. Yeah, he did like wrestling in the army and stuff. And my great grandfather, up until his death, he would you know Stockton Beach near Newcastle. He put leg weights on when he was 80 and like run 5k's up and down the beach That's at 80 uh, and. Fit as a fiddle, went on holidays one day, bumped his head in the shower, he was laughing about it, had a headache that night and a blood clot killed him, so <laughs> crazy. Wow. And then my grandfather, I was moving back home in 08 and he was gonna come live with me because my grandmother had passed away. 
because he he always trained me when I was younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There'd be mornings like oh, getting ready for shows when I was fifteen, be pissing down, rain, freezing cold. I'm like, yeah, I get to sleep in. Yeah, yeah. It'd be like four a.m. on the bedroom window. I'm like. He's checking on the bastard. He's there ready. I think I've got to go now if he's out there. Yeah. But even when he was like 72, he was leg pressing 800 pounds and stuff. No way. It used to be an old leg press that had like a chain on it. You had to adjust the chain to how far it come down. Mm. And he never adjusted it. He had 800 pounds on it this one time. Came down on the 19th rep. Snapped his knee, snapped his ankle. <laughs> broke, broke both his legs. And far out. So the stupidity runs in the family. But <laughs> in 08, when I was moving back home, he was going to come live with me and get ready for a show again. But... He went to hospital for a skin cancer just on his neck and when they put him under they turned his oxygen off and he had a heart attack they revived him from that put him back in his room and the nurse turned his oxygen off again had another heart attack and they pretty much couldn't save him so mm. two weeks later he just passed away and the hospital wrote a letter saying we're very sorry what happened and since then we've changed the practices so it doesn't happen again i'm yeah. like well that doesn't bring him back does yeah, it so, yeah, yeah. yeah so he probably would have been still going there because his brother he was two years older than his brother, my uncle, and he's 95 and still walking around driving a car. And, That's it, yeah, or a so, soldier. Yeah. <laughs> Far out. So, so bro, you like you, you got into bodybuilding like that through your mum? No, uh, mainly just through my grandfather. Through your And grand then my mum got into it through me. So. Yeah, through you, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you ever, like when you were growing up, look up to bodybuilders before you? Because uh, that's the common story. Yeah, not really. Not it's really, like... No. I knew who Arnold was and yeah. Tom Platts and that, but I never really looked at bodybuilders. I said it was always just a He-Man figure and yeah, the action yeah, yeah, dolls because yeah, the they're always dolls. so freaky. What about wrestling? No, not, not really. even. No, but yeah. then I said it was like when I looked at the bodybuilder magazines, it's like, okay, I like Arnold's arms, but yeah, I like yeah. Tom Platts's legs. Mm. It was always like the freaky body parts. I never really liked one bodybuilder. Oh yeah, really? In yeah, general, yeah. no. So what? At what point then do you think that it went from? being like Mr. He-Man and being mm -hmm. from a fitness family to you recognising that you want to go into competitions and well, did you did everyone around you just say like bruh like yeah. I know you're not full into it but you that's can go somewhere that's pretty much how it started because when I when I was 13 years old that's when I'd done my first free contest and won them at 13 yeah. and then at 14 I did a men's open and placed third in a men's open class wow. against guys 20, 30 years against old against adults yeah this around Newcastle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cut, the first show I won was in Sydney. Oh yeah. They had like a schoolboys division, 18 years and under. Yeah. So I was only 13 at the time and I won three that year. And then 15, I think I won my first state title, but it wasn't probably until I won my first Mr. Australia at 17 and got runner up in the universe. That's and I crazy. thought, oh, I might keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, but well, then normally yeah. too, when you win your national title, you get a pro card. Yeah. But because I was 17, they said I was too young. So when I was 18, I won the national title again, still said I was too young. Oh, no way. 19, I won it for the third time. I said, well, I'm not coming back again. So at 19, um, a guy, Lou Zuick, used to run this um, American muscle show on ESPN. Yep. So he flew me to America to do Niagara Falls amateur show. Yep. But when I was in Gold's gym, Jim Mannion was there. He runs the IFBB now in NPC. That was in LA? Yeah, yep. in Venice, California. And he said, what are you doing? I said, the Niagara Falls. He goes, what have you done? I said, well, I've won the Mr. Australia this many times. He's like, well, why don't you have a pro card? I said, they won't give me one. So he called up Wayne DeMille at the time who was running the pro division. They contacted Paul Graham in Australia and I got my pro card. And I was originally going to America for two weeks. Yep. And my first week at Gold's, they took some photos, sent them to Joe Weider. I got a contract. So two weeks turned into 18 years. <laughs> <laughs> Dead set. And Joe Weider was... Head of the, head of the IFBB. But well, Joe Weeder just ran like you know all the Weeder supplements. He ran oh, the yeah. magazines, Muscle and Fitness Flex magazine. Because but it. he was a big thing at yeah. the start. He pretty much ran the. He pretty much run the whole. He pretty much like he was the head of the IFBB, like yeah. the, the main guy of the yeah. magazines and that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Him and his brother Ben. And you were in the Olympia six times, bro. Yeah, could have been in it more, but I was suspended a couple of years. A couple of years, I just didn't want to do it, so I just. But like I said, I didn't really like competing. Competing was good because you go to the expos and meet the fans. Yeah. But normally when you had a supplement contract, they wanted you to do the big shows. Yeah. So I just had to compete to keep the contracts. The yeah, yeah, contracts, really. So. Yeah, you didn't really enjoy competing. No, because I hated dieting. I like eating. I like, <laughs> I like the training side and the lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, having to diet down and look a certain way yeah, and get yeah. on stage and say, this guy's better than you. Because, you know, the judging is very subjective. So Bro, when, when you're at that level... That. Everyone's so close. Yeah, some people like the big freaky physique, some yeah. like the symmetrical physique. So really the judges, yeah. you know, there's a lot of politics back in it back I then as well. I was say so. that, bro. Like even just as an outsider, I, I, it's like I know that because like you said, it's so subjective. There's not, it's not like you're running a race. Yeah. You don't go, I'm 10.3, he's 10.2, I win. It's mm -hmm. just subjective. 
And in a private thing like that, in such a subjective art, there's always going to be so much politics, bro. That's why even like now, when I had all my bodybuilding trophies, I kept them in a box and I got sick of them, so I raffled them off and auctioned them off and gave the money to like animal shelters and stuff oh, like really? that. Oh, really? Yeah, because people are like, why are you get rid of your bodybuilding trophies? Well, I'm like, well, they don't really mean anything. I can remember yeah. them, but all my car racing trophies, because when I used to do the drag racing and oval track, I won the championship doing the drag racing yeah. and that. They meant more to me because, like you said, if I win the race, I've won the you, race. You've won the it's race. It's not like someone yeah. going, oh, maybe there's another nothing, car. That's like, right. There's I crossed the line say. first. That yeah, was it. So. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So. I can imagine how disheartening it would be to, to like – be up against that and, and people got their mates and shit like that dealing oh, yeah. with that type of shit. Well, you know, back then too, you had judges that would know competitors personally, you know, they'd train at their gym and stuff. So yeah, it'd really. be disheartening too. If you, if you give it 100% and you, yeah. you know you look your best and the guy who's 80% beat you, he's like, well, yeah, yeah, what yeah, can yeah. I do to be any better? Because yeah, this guy's out of shape and he still wins. And then so if you I'm say like, something, you oh, just look yeah. like a bitch. Yeah, That's why when, I, when yeah. I'd do articles in the magazines and talk about the politics, and like I said, it always gets yeah. suspended, yeah, yeah, labelled yeah. the troublemaker, and they'd be like, Lee, we know what goes on. I said, well, you run the sport. If you know what goes on, this one judge was like, I don't care how such and such looks. I always put him first because she was sleeping with him. I said, no she way. shouldn't be on the judging panel. Simple as that. I said, you know she's doing it, so why have her judge? No way. So there's all, all that crap. I didn't even know there were females on the judging panel. Yeah, there's a few. Or it yeah. used to be. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I, said, I think it's a lot better now, but back then it was just like very... And then it would be like sometimes too if, say it was the Iron Man Pro Show and it's sponsored by Muscle Tech. Yeah. If there's a Muscle Tech athlete in there who's high paid... He suddenly wins the show. Oh, so dead it's, set. It's just that bad. Yeah, it used to be, yeah. Fucking hell. I can full understand what you're saying about the, the difference between the lifestyle of training and actually the whole lead up for a, mm-hmm. for a show. Everything, down to your eating, yeah. even down to the things that you have to use, like the, the drugs that you yeah. have to use, be more intense. It's, it would be just a full ultimate head doer. But I was always lucky because when I used them, I never abused them. That was the difference. Yeah. And I'd do seminars overseas and talk about my drug use. My sponsors, hey, I said, look, I'm not going to lie to people. Yeah. If they say if I used it, I'm going to tell them. But, you know, if I used test, I went yeah. up to 800 milligrams once for a couple of weeks. I felt like shit. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. I stayed on 400, I felt great. You know, sus 250, if I stayed around two milligrams, which is 500, if mm. it's true, 250, mm. I felt great. Diana Bowl, probably 30 milligrams a day. But I'll do seminars. Those things are not even that much, bro. No. Not now, anyway. No, but I, I've, what there's doing, been times I've done more than that. That's the thing, though. Like an idiot. I've done seminars. I'll have young, I was in England once, and they were talking about drugs, and I said how much I use the test, and they're like, okay, whatever. Yeah. It's like, I've heard you day. take this much. I'm like, yeah, I've read I've taken that too, but yeah. I'm the guy that fucking injects it into myself. I know what I'm taking. I yeah. said, look, if I took 20,000 milligrams, I'd fucking tell you. I don't give a shit what you know about me. So, But there was young kids here like, well, I take 5,000. I'm like, so I can tell in his mind, he's thinking, I take 5,000. Lee said he took 400. He's bigger than me, so he's bullshitting. He's got to take more. Yeah. They get that mentality, yeah. more is better, but it's not. Yeah. It's just, the only one who's going to benefit is the guy you're buying it off because he's That's making true. a shitload of money. So. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't need that much. Your body can only use so much. But yeah. with the internet now and all these so-called gurus on there, this is what the pros do, I know for a fact. And remember Paul Dillette, he was a monster. He lived with me before the night and Olympia. And I hear the rumours, Paul takes this, Paul takes that. He used very little. Yeah. So when you're talking about the top pros in any sport, they're just ge- genetically gifted. Yeah. yeah. Some people would take more, some would take less, but majority of the top guys use not anywhere near what people think they yeah, use because yeah, I said yeah. they just got the genetics. Bro, those, th- those forums, bro, they're the biggest poison. Oh, I swear terrible. to God they're the biggest poison. Mm-hmm. They've drilled me. I, yeah. You know, like, bro, look, so when you get into training, obviously because all the – I didn't never learn nothing about training in – Actually, the way I learned about training was probably the best way by just doing it. Yeah, so in jail, way, yeah. I had no information. Mm-hmm. It's just whatever works. Yeah. And, 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 and like that's probably the best way. But when I got out and I jumped on the internet and there's yeah. <laughs> Reddit and YouTube and this whole world of info, yeah. you become overwhelmed by mm-hmm. And a lot of the stuff that I like would read in these things the would go science. And, yeah, the bro, yeah, the bro <laughs> science. It goes against what I knew. But mm-hmm. because the people that were saying it were – more knowledgeable than me Mm -hmm. so they claim so i would i experimented in many different things they've said and it's not only like obviously drug use it's it's training that's That's the biggest head doing it well the training i said drugs to me was always the last thing Mm. it was you know people i say what's the most important thing in body but i said your mind so if you haven't got a strong mind to be able to focus be consistent day after day year after year so you're not going to make it you know even when you have workouts and you feel like you want to stop, I said, your mind's always going to give out before the muscle. Mm. Because, you know, you're doing anything that's like 
bad on your body and it hurts your mind says fucking stop this because it's yeah. hurting yeah. but you got to push past that and go into that pain zone where you just i remember when i used to squat six seven plates because people say oh you bodybuilders look at yourself in the mirror yeah. i'm like well when i'd squat that yes i'm looking in the mirror yeah, yeah. i see myself but i'm in that zone where you see yourself but you don't recognize yourself mm. all you see is a figure moving up and down i can't tell it's me because i'm just so zoned into oh, really? the yeah. action i'm doing yeah so like people think like all oh, these drugs are going to make a difference but i've seen kids where they might train two or three times a week. They eat probably one or two meals a day. So like they're training and eating shit. Yep. They go out party on the weekends. They're like, I'm gonna get serious now and they go on the gear. Yep. So they go on the gear, but now they're training six days a week, eating five, six meals a day, they're mm. resting and they're like, look at me, I'm stronger, I look better. I said, mate, if you just- That would've happened anyway. If you just trained, yeah, yeah. five, six days <laughs> yeah. a week, you ate properly, without the drugs you would've changed. Yeah, so, of course. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. everyone's trying to put the cart before the horse. There's no foundation work anymore, whereas, yeah. Yeah, I took gear at 19, but I'd done everything naturally beforehand. Mm. And I put other people like, well, why'd you take it so young? I said, well, from 9, 13 to 19, I competed naturally because I was in a lightweight division the whole time. Once I got from 19, if you look on the internet, you'll see me when I'm 19 and lightweight. The end of the year when I've taken Decker, I took yeah. 200 milligrams for eight weeks and put on 20 pounds of muscle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I look like this little miniature Dorian. <laughs> you, can tell, you can tell when I went on it pretty yeah, quick. Yeah, and yeah. people are like, well, why that age? Cause I said, well, at 19, 20 is when I turned pro. Yeah. So I said, I can have the best genetics in the world and so have they. But if they've got the best genetics and their own gear, yeah. I've got to take gear to keep up of with them. So it's like, of yeah. Of course you do, yeah, yeah. As, uh, for 100%, I'm glad you made that point. As, as, as second or third that it comes down the line of importance, mm -hmm. it's definitely something at that level that yeah. is a must, you yeah. know what I mean? There's no denying the, the strength and... Mm -hmm. and, it's, and the thing is, in all sports, I remember, this would have been back in the 90s. Right, it's all sports Yeah, too. Sports yeah, Illustrated yeah. did an article once on steroid use in sports. Yeah. You know, people always think bodybuilding because you look yeah. at someone, oh, the muscles, this and that. Yeah. Number one steroid users in the world were soccer players. Oh, no way. Yeah. Soccer but, players. Yeah, just for like, <laughs> people don't understand because, you know, Some when you're taking steroids, thing. yeah, it just yeah. helps you recover. Yeah. You look at how much soccer players run and bodybuilding yeah. was number eight. Number four was like just college kids wanting to look good. That's it. Uh, yeah, but because we look so different, people think to look that way, you got to take yeah. drugs, but... It's yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot more to it's steroids more for, than more just for recovery mass. than anything. Yeah, recovery. And I'm sure you've known guys. Mm. I know guys living in LA. I'd see guys come to the gym every day, taking large amounts mm. year after year, and not even change because yeah, yeah. they think if I take gifts, like you can't turn shit into gold. If yeah. you haven't got the genetics, you can take all the drugs in the world. Yeah. You're not going to get bigger, but yet they think, oh, I'll take more. That'll help. But like, and there's actually there is there is a science to it too. It's not as simple as just take heaps of everything. Mm -hmm. There is a science to it, and yeah, yeah, like I know for me, like so. Obviously, another benefit of growing up in jail is that I trained for 15 years with yeah. nothing. I didn't yeah. even have creatine, so mm -hmm. I was well trained oh, yeah. by the time I ever used steroids. And I thought that it was just going to be some magical thing, mm -hmm. like straight out. Oh, yeah. I'm the prime example of like how people overstate how great and and how great that steroids make you. So I've been big naturally, right? Yeah. I've looked mad. I've been lean. I've been fit. I've been muscly. I've been I've been everything in between. And I always thought, imagine me on steroids. Mm -hmm. I'll just be like you. Like that's the what Hulk I thought. Or something. Like the Hulk, yeah. just started. Like you. I'll look like Lee Priest. I'll look like um, Ronnie Coleman. Like that's it. Twenty-one inch arms. Yeah, that's yeah, it, bro. Massive. And and bro, and I had it, and I, I, I took like start on Dynabols and mm -hmm. and test like five hundred mils of test, a bit of human growth hormones, and finished on Anavars and all the rubbish that I read in the forums. Yeah. <laughs> I took every. I was on sixties at one. Bro, I put all the weight on in my face. Yeah. I become yeah. a balloon in my face. Uh -huh. Had a bloated gut. I was the Debatably stronger, mm -hmm. and I just like there, there is a real science to it, but it doesn't like like you said, it doesn't really make up for like it's not no. magic, right? No. It definitely isn't in the, in the training. And actually, I you wish made I was because always people when they say steroids and this, I'm thinking, mate, if there's a magic pill, tell me. Yeah. I've been training. I've been probably training thirty. Uh, what? I just turned fifty now, so since I was 12, 13 I've been yeah. training, and I was right. just saying to someone the other day. In that whole time from the age of 12 to 50 now, if I had up all the time I've had off, you know, yeah. whether I've been sick or I've had to go to hospital for an operation, like the, the two I had on my neck, I took a couple of days off and I went back to the gym. Oh, that's and, it. Or if I'm traveling around What'd the world. What you have your neck? A tumor? I got T-bone, oh. so I crushed all the nerves oh, in my that's neck. It. So I had to get two operations. Still not yeah. properly training yeah, again yeah. yet, but I'm doing something. But yeah. Yeah, so add up all the days, like, you know, maybe if I was sick a day or two or then travelled from here to England, there's a day off. Well, you got probably, like six months gap in probably, 38 years. Probably like nine total, <laughs> nine close to nine months. Yeah. Out. A day here, a day. If I add them all up, it'd probably be nine months. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I spent, when you said the soccer players, that, that was a shock to me, but it makes perfect sense because 
like if for the recovery aspect mm -hmm. of it, because soccer players are constantly playing. Yeah. Because they play in their, especially in Europe, they mm -hmm. play in their league, mm -hmm. and then they, halfway through the week they play in the Europa League and this and that. Some of them are playing three matches a, a week. Well, it's even like um, you know, baseballers and stuff like that. You think of these pitchers, you know, because you know, what I hate is when when they came out and they busted a few baseballs, people like, oh, it's cheating. It's yeah. this and that. I said, you're the fiends. You sit in the stands. You want to see him strike people out. You want to see yeah. him throw this. 100 mile an hour ball or more. Yeah. And to do that and be on 100% every time, mm. you got to take him because just the recovery, the wear and tear on the body. Mm. If you want this guy to be at 100%, the second they're not, you're like, oh, fucking yeah. retire, you're washed up. And I yeah, remember yeah, when yeah, I moved yeah, home. Yeah, 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 right. I think Ponting, point. Ricky Ponting had a couple of bad things. It was like, oh, he's shit. He's I was like, one of the greatest cricketers ever. The best. I'm he's amazing. My I'm amazing. Punter. Amazed how Australians just turn on their own so yeah. fucking quick. You ever I remember when. Was it a few years ago when Parramatta was doing shit? Yeah, yeah. They run out on the field and the Parramatta fans are booing them. I'm thinking, That's in it. America, you can have a baseball team that hasn't won for 20 years. They love But them. their fans support them, they love them to the death. <laughs> Here in Australia, you have one or two bad games. Oh, here's shit. Yeah. Like Leighton Hewitt playing tennis, he does yeah, good. Right. Oh, he's out here, he's this, and well, he has actually, a bad game. That's a good point. Ah, he's shit. I'm thinking, you pricks, you're sitting at yeah. home in your fucking armchairs. It's like, too, when you watch them playing football. But my friends watch it, they get all excited. I'm just like, oh, fucking, they'll be like, oh, look at that, he fucking missed it, you blind yeah. I'm like, you're sitting at fucking home. I said, have you ever been on a football field? You've got the crowd yelling, you've got people, you're running at eye level of everybody. And if someone throws a ball, you've got a split second to make a decision mm. to catch it or do whatever, your adrenaline's pumping. Because yeah. my friends are like, oh, how did he not see that? I said, I said, you're sitting on a couch at home. You've got 20 fucking camera yeah. angles. Of course, you can fucking see it. I said, get on the field where you've got a guy running here. As soon as he stops, oh, there's the ball. It's like a split second. You're, That's how time they got to react. Yeah. And you're here criticizing him. You know, the, the best example of that is in watching like UFC or MMA. Oh, yeah. And people are like on the brink of death at any moment. Someone's getting choked to death. Mm -hmm. And some idiots yeah, at home I like, could bro, get out just, of that. Yeah. just stand up. What yeah. are you doing? I could get just, out of that. Yeah, I could get, like, oh, yeah. You idiot. You, all you had to do was like... Bicycle kick him in the head. Oh, yeah. It was like the last year or so, I've just been doing boxing for fun, just to change for oh, cardio. Yeah, man. Just like sparring and stuff. And it's so wicked. Like I said, you can train with heavy weights and do squats. I do two or three hours of cardio sometimes on a treadmill and stepper. Yeah. But like I said, until you do boxing, like I said, it's a whole different cardio, yeah. another level. Because yeah. even just hitting pads, I'm like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Then last couple of weeks ago, I took the dogs walking on the weekend. Every time I went walking, I was eating fucking ice creams and hot dogs. Mm. I put on like just over six kilos in one weekend. Oh, really? And I went yeah. back to boxing Monday. Like in the gym, if I was lifting weights, wouldn't notice it. Those 12 pounds on Monday boxing, I'm like... <sighs> yeah. Like, fucking hell. And then I said, plus if you go to sparring then, because your adrenaline's rushing, your heart's yeah. pumping more. I was like, fuck you this. You loving I the said, boxing? Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's and I said, just for cardio, like mm. I said, you know, the guy I have, you know, Neville Short was training me for a while and just doing that, he only gives you 30 seconds between each three minute round. I'm oh, like, yeah. fucking hell. It's like, let's get my breath back. He's like, let's go. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I said, towards after five rounds, I'm looking at the clock going, is that thing broken? It's got to be three minutes. I look up and it's only a minute, 20 seconds. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, oh, shit. <laughs> Spin out how there's different, like, different cardio affects you different ways. Oh. Like, I remember I got out, like, after a few years out of jail and I was, Every day doing MMA in there, hitting the pads, kicking. Oh, yeah. So I was so like used to that. I could kick mm -hmm. pads and thing what like dead set like fifteen minute rounds, yeah. and I swam in a pool. Oh yeah, brother, I done one lap. And yeah. At the <laughs> end, I thought I was gonna die. Yeah. My, my body was pumped. It was locked. I got out on the side. Uh, I like, ah. And I was like, wow, I thought I was fit, yeah. but it's just a different, oh, yeah, a different that's what, that's movement. What I said with the weight training, like I said going heavy, breathing, doing treadmill. I go up the level yeah. fifteen, and then I bring it back down, do that for like an hour. Yeah. I got the box. I thought this would be okay. So I was like almost when. I did like circle track car racing and then road racing. Yeah. And then my friend said, do you want to get in the dragsters? I said, okay. I said, it'd be fucking easy driving a straight line. Yeah, yeah, oh my yeah. God. When you get in those drags, they're like 8,000 horsepower and yeah. you've got to hold that butterfly handle. If you hold it too tight, any little movement, it's like you're going into the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that just even doing that, driving a car that, with that much horsepower straight, yeah. it's like a Is lot that been harder. something you've been getting into? Well, I did that when I was in America for oh. a couple of years and my first year doing that, I got third in the championship and rookie of the year. Then the second year I won That's the championship it. doing it, yeah. What, so what, top fuel drags this? The alcohol, alcohol and then super comp. Wow. And before that I was doing a bit of road racing, circle track and that won a few races. Yeah, that, so. that's hectic. You, you into cars? 
I am, yeah. Well, living in America, cars are so cheap over there. You can buy, well, my Corvette cost me 36000 Like that new rear engine Corvette over there is 50000 Here it's like 160000 200000 Every car here. I'll go for so many Even cars. the oldest Japanese oh, car no. here, bro. The old Skylines are all oh, Toyota no. Supers. They're charging like a quarter of a mil. It's a joke here. But I just sold my, I had like a Mustang GT500 supercharged 850. I just sold that and Did you brought know? a fully rebuilt 1970 fastback mustang oh wow so Hectic. it's nice yeah <laughs> it's won me four trophies already that's it i was saying to my wife the other day i came back the other night from a big ford night out i got best car to meet i said can you believe this shit i said all those years i fucking dieted and trained my ass off to get a trophy i said now i sit beside the car eating fucking hamburgers <laughs> and i still get trophies yeah, true, eh? <laughs> so my car's doing it for me now so <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah it's yeah. great yeah, but we know like back to what we were saying about like too much information on mm -hmm. the internet and stuff. Where do you fall in? Well, it's not where do you fall. What the, the proof is in people like you. Yeah. I hate how there's studies that come out of oh. Birmingham University oh, yeah. that say this is the optimal way to yeah. train. And you look at it, or oh, this is the optimal exercise. You don't mm -hmm. need another ex exercise. It's like don't do bench press. All you need to do is flies. Yeah. Uh, don't do um, don't train for, for like 20 sets. All you need is two sets or whatever. Oh, yeah. Where do you fall or what did you do throughout your life the most consistently? And have you experimented basic, with that? Just basics. And that's the thing. I used to, people say, Lee, can you do me a diet? Can you do me a training thing? And I drive up a diet sometimes in training program. They say, what about the supplements? I'm like, I can only show you what I use. So yeah. I'd, give to them, I'd get emails back. Are you fucking with me? <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? Like, that's too basic and there's not enough drugs. Yeah. I said, that's what I did. I said, so yeah. I said, that's fucking basic. You pick up weights, you lift them, you put them yeah. down. I said, that's not fucking rocket science. If you want to put on a lot of weight, eat more food, eat a yeah. bit of junk food. You want to get really ripped, just train as heavy as you can, add cardio and eat super clean. Yeah. I said, there's no fucking, but these people, like I said, these, I've, I've been to things where people ask me a question. I say, well, if you want to get big arms, stick to the basics. Well, I read a study that says, oh, I don't yeah, yeah. study. I was like, <laughs> why don't you just go ask bodybuilders who've been doing it for 20, 30 years? Yeah. I said, I don't give a shit what yeah, study you got. No, it's like... Right. The, biggest thing, the biggest thing that I hate in that is that how everyone talks so bad about what they call the bro split. Oh, yeah. It, like, bro, in, if you read, it's the worst thing ever invented. Yet mm -hmm. so many champions have done it. Yeah, I find that the best way to train, I said, find what works for you. Because yeah. I get people all the time because of my arms when I got voted best arms. They're like, what do you do for biceps? I'm like, I do the same as you. Yeah. But I could say, look, I find barbell curl the best for me. If I said, hey, Spaniard, go do barbell curl, you might, eh, they're good, but I prefer dumbbell. Yeah. But if you prefer dumbbell, do dumbbell. Yeah, Just yeah, because yeah. I do something I find best for me. You've got to find, you said, mm. you've got to experiment. Find what works best for you. Because mm. like I said, leg press might be good for you, but squats are better for somebody else or hack squats. So yeah. people go like, oh, this is what Dorian Yates did. I'm going to do the same routine. I look like Dorian. It's like, mm. yeah, that doesn't work that way. Yeah. So yeah, you just got to find what works for you. And then like I said, but keep it basic. But how do you find the the errors of bodybuilding? I would say, I, from what I would say, I would say there were four errors. The very early one was Steve Reeves. And oh, yeah. when they look just like, they look natural, yeah. pretty much. It was like the Greek statue. The stuff, Greek yeah. statue stuff. Then, then there's the Arnold, mm -hmm. Sergei Newbray era. Yeah. Your era, mm -hmm. 90s, late 80s, and mm -hmm. then in early 2000s, mm -hmm. and then nowadays. Uh, I like, uh, people always get mad when I say, but I like the 90s, early 2000s, yeah. probably the best, because they had a combination of the size Everything. and the symmetry, the conditioning. Now, don't get me wrong, guys are big today, but... The back, back then, you could, you could just see, if you saw a silhouette of someone, you'd be like, that's Paul Dillette, that's Vince Taylor. You'd know, yeah. but now they're also, they're big, but yet, I don't, don't, some of them have conditioning, but still, it's not like that real thick. Like I said, you look back at the old days of Bird or Fox, even Arnold, Sergio Oliva, they look like, even into the 90s, they look like they were cut out of rock. Yeah, Now I they agree. look big, but they still look like they have that softness to I them. I agree. It's not like they're real heavy. Like a big, I'll say a big, big Rami is a perfect example yeah, of that. Exactly. If you compare big Rami to Jay Cutler, no. it's like, bro, that's just, it's not even in the same well, league. Well, look at Rami's conditioning to someone like Dorian Yates. Yeah, oh, that's, like, that's it. like, you know, yeah. not taking nothing away from Rami. He's a big guy yeah, and yeah. he's Mr. Olympia, so you can't deny him that. But yeah, but. He's a monster. When these other guys would stand the there, when they'd stand there back in the earlier years, just standing there, they look shredded. Yeah. Guys now look like they're holding fluid, but when they pose, they're cut, but it's not like that real dry mm. where you're just like... I wonder that, what that's that why is. when like Hardy, remember Hardy, when he plays second and that? Uh, when was Chopin, that? No, I don't know. A couple him. of years ago. Yeah. There's a couple of guys that now, yeah. 
There's one or two guys that come in with the conditioning from the 90s when they're simply like, oh my God, look at him, he's shredded. Because they stand out so much now if you get that conditioning. Oh, so some people are coming in like that now. One or two have done in the last couple of years. And like I said, when they're on the lineup, you're just like, your eyes go straight to them Mm. because they stand out so much because of that conditioning. Oh, that's mad. But I think guys now, it's all, I, I, I blame the judges a bit because the judges said a while back, just before I stopped competing, that they were gonna, you know, anyone had a bloated stomach, they're gonna take points off. I remember they that. did for some people, it's a big but not thing other a few people. Years ago. So, oh, did they? Yeah. So other people say you're coming in and you're really shredded. You've got a small waist, and you get fifth, and they give it to a guy that's bigger, bloated stomach. You figure, well, fuck. For me to place high, I've got to get bigger. Yeah. So everyone's chasing this bigness now, not worried about the symmetry, the mm. shape. It's just this weight. It's like I'm two sixty, I'm two eighty. It's like, yeah, but I remember Flex Wheeler. He even said the best he looked was two eighteen. You know, when he looked, He's an when, when he was two forty, Flex Wheeler's an animal. He's still good, but he didn't look as great. Yeah. When I won my first pro show, I came off stage and people were like, oh, Lee, what did you weigh? I said, what do you think I weighed? They're like, oh, 235, 240. I said, I weighed 199 pounds. Fair income. I'd always rub it into Chris Cormier. I said, yeah, hey, Chris, yeah. what did you weigh? He got second. <laughs> He's like 260. I'm like, fuck, you got beat by a guy under 200. He's like, fuck you. Because <laughs> like I said, on stage, it's an illusion. Yeah. The smaller your joints get, the way you see the muscle, it gets smaller here. It looks like it's popping. Mm. And when you get on stage, it's just an illusion. But if you go on stage a little bit smoother, you look a lot smoother. Yeah. So you're better off getting that little bit more shredded. Mm. Okay, you might be five pounds lighter, but on stage you look 15 pounds bigger. Yeah. It's just an illusion up there. Yeah, so. it is, eh? But who, who have you... Obviously, you would have been so desensitised to huge people. You've mm-hmm. lived your life around that. Yeah, so I trained at World Gym. I was like trained with Lou Ferrigno, Arnold and all those people and stuff like that. So Really? Yeah, I remember when I, um, crazy. I did those photos in Arnold's book because he was at the gym every day. And yeah. when we were doing the photos in the book, I was like training away. He's like, stop, stop. He comes over and he's got his towel and he's wiping my sweat off. Oh, no way. Oh, gets, carry on, carry on. Is that stop, his stop. encyclopedia yeah. of modern day bodybuilding? Yeah. I, had that, yeah. I had that book. Yeah. You were in that? Yeah. Yeah, hectic. I got a lot of pictures in there. I had to sign a lot of them. But then I'd start, then he'd like, stop, stop. And he comes over and he starts putting oil on my arms. Does he? I said, the photographer said, I said, fuck the training picture. I said, every time Arnold wipes my sweat off and puts oil on me, I said, get me photos of that. <laughs> so I can say, look, Arnold's my bitch. Look at him, look at him. <laughs> <laughs> when was that, in the 90s? Yeah, it would have been in the 90s. Over in uh, World Gym, yeah. yeah. You know, the good old days back then. Who, who stands out? Like, which which uh, which of the lads did you stand next to? More Obviously, all of them, but you looked at them and you just thought in your own head, this bloke's a fucking monster. Probably this bloke's Dillette. a freak. Yeah, because yeah, he, he lived with me for eight months, Dillette, yeah. so I'd see him every day and that. So. Is he American? Canadian. Canadian. Lazy fuck, too. I used to always laugh. Oh, yeah? He'd fly <laughs> some girl in from somewhere and I'd come home from the gym and... I could hear him snoring upstairs. So I'd walk upstairs, walk past his room. He'd be laying flat out on the bed, <laughs> just with his posing trunks on, sound asleep. And the girl is flown in, you know, to bang or whatever. She's got a bucket of water beside the bed and a razor blade shaving him while he's sleeping. Oh, I'm no like, way. you fucking lazy. He's <laughs> <laughs> getting shaved. He'd go to Body Alive. They were like a clothing company there. Because I said, you poor, you know, let me see if you do any washing. He just throws his dirty clothes in the trunk of his car then tosses them to the homeless people and goes, gets new clothes Does from he? the body life company <laughs> rather than do laundry. I'm like, what a funny fella. <laughs> We'd always get on good though. It was funny. Yeah, fuck. Bro, how, how what do you think the difference, of, have a look at you now. Mm-hmm. Like, bro, like, I go, on, I Google and I see, you see a lot of videos, a lot of YouTube videos about bodybuilders, even from after you, even from like the mid 2000s. Like, yeah. And they look nothing like you. Like mm. you see them, a lot of them look like normal people. Or normal that. people. What do you think the difference with you? Even bro, you're you're, you're ten times more in shape right now than even Dorian is. <laughs> like for real. I think just because I've always kept training, and that's the thing. Because when I first had my car accident in fifteen, I had the first neck operation. I took a bit of Decca, and I thought, ah, oh, fucking hate taking gear again. And I was training. It wasn't until probably. This year, I just started using a bit of tests like SUS250, yep. one mil every eight eight days because I was doing the transformation thing for species, my sponsor. Yep. So I just did that and that's what I was taking. But up until then, people were like, you must be on gear. I'm like, why? Well, how do you keep your muscle? I'm like, I still train every day. I eat. Why would my muscle disappear? Yeah. Like, sure, if I stop training, muscle will atrophy. And if you're not eating enough, you'll get smaller. Mm. Or if I stop training, but I keep eating a lot of food, I'll get fatter. But yeah, I just kept training up the whole time and stuff yeah. like that. So. I've always had a good base foundation. I never really lost, even if I came off a cycle, I might drop five pounds of water weight, but I see guys that would do a cycle of steroids, they get really big, and, and they come off and I'm different. like, well, where did it all go? It's yeah. like, oh, I, so I you've always, always had like the luck, yeah. like you've held it as yeah. well, yeah. And my friends used to laugh too, because 
I've been like I can sometimes have two meals a day and I won't lose any size. Really? Whereas my friends are like to have six meals. But yeah, because if I'm busy now and I get busy during the day, I hate stopping to eat. So I'll just go yeah. six, seven hours without eating, yeah, then just yeah, eat yeah. at night, go to bed. So Better that I've been way. lucky that yeah. way. But I got friends like I said they'll eat every two hours. They're not even competing. I say you want to come to Sydney? Oh, what? we'll stay overnight. Oh, I have to bring my shot. Have to I'm like, have your shot when you get home. <laughs> no, I've got to have it on Monday. Yeah. Have your fucking shot on Tuesdays. What the fuck? You yeah. <laughs> like they get so into this craziness. It's like, it's like they don't, they don't have a life. Even though, like I said, normal people, yeah. I can't yeah. do this because I'm a training. This is like, mate, you got to have balance here. Okay, That's go to the gym, point. do balance. whatever. But outside the gym, I see so many bodybuilders too where relationships fail because they're so into the gym. It's like, yes, when you go to the gym, be 100%. Be honest on your diet, but if you've yeah. got a girlfriend, a wife, or whatever, kids, you still yeah, got to make time for them. Go life. see a movie, go for a walk. It's like, I can't do that because to them, doing that wouldn't be hardcore. Yeah. I've got to sit at home and be fucking miserable. It's like, get out of here. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that part of what I see from bodybuilders, that eating, that like how they meal prep every morning. They take oh, yeah. some, some of them, they're taking their bags with them mm -hmm. of just feeds. It's like, their whole life revolves around eating. Mm -hmm. Well, they carry that big water jug too. I'm like, oh, where are you going to Sahara Desert? You're going to fucking dehydrate? It's like, I, they carry like a gallon. I'm like, where are you going to go to? You can't got, fucking drink water. Hey, like, <laughs> yeah, the big water jug, the big I know. The one gallon jug. Well, well I, there was that, there's that restaurant called The like Firehouse. Rich Piano's yeah. had it everywhere. I know, but yeah. like, what do you need it for? But you know, I've seen these guys too in Venice. They go to the firehouse and they bring their meals in and they have chicken and rice. And I'll be sitting there eating hamburger and fries if I'm not competing. You know, because co contest time, I'd weigh between 200 and 210 pounds. Off season, I was 285 pounds, 135 kilos really? at five yeah. foot five. Yeah, yeah. Because I just love eating. People are like, Lee, why do you get so fat? I'm like, that's off season. I'm going to fucking live my yeah. life and have fun. I'm not going to be worried about, oh, my abs still showing now. I'm like, fuck that shit. Yeah. My face would get that fat. Yeah. People are like, you'll never get in shape. Yeah, I've seen oh, some you're photos. Fat, you're fat pig. Bomb. <laughs> like, you fat pig, you'll never get in shape. Still, they get in shape. Oh, we knew you could do it. You look great. I'm like, fuck off. It was so funny too because I'd be at the gym every time we got in contest shape. All the girls would come hang around. Oh, you are you doing any photo shoots and that? They want to get on the covers of the magazines. Oh, that's off it. season when I'm fat, they wouldn't even fucking talk to me. But as soon as you get in shape, <laughs> oh, it's like, bro, what? What was it that exactly that it was that got you banned from the IFBB? Being outspoken, mm -hmm. mostly in related to pay. No, just the way the athletes were treated all the time, generally, and oh, in general, yeah, and stuff like that. But generally, the first, the two year suspension was the IFBB. The guy that used to run it started a new organisation called the PDI, mm -hmm. and he was going to judge on symmetrical shapes. That again. Oh, was he? Yeah. Yeah. So, what was his name? Wayne D'Amelia. Wayne, yeah. So I, I thought I, I had run in with Wayne. He suspended me a few times when he ran the IFBB, but I didn't hold against yeah. him because when I won that first pro show, I did an article that came out that same weekend and I was first to the athletes meeting. He's like, what's this, Lee, this article? And we got into a huge argument up there with my wife at the time. And I said, fuck, I'm fucked tomorrow when this contest comes on. I'm not even going to place. Yeah. I ended up winning the show and he come over. He goes, are you surprised you won? I said, yeah. I said, after the argument we had the, last night, he goes, Lee, he goes, I don't hold that against you. He goes, but you're asking the article why I do what I do. He goes, because he goes, I respect you. You'll talk, speak your mind and stand up and say stuff. He goes, but I know the other 99 will do exactly as I say. So he goes, if I suspend you, that scares them. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I'd always be like the head on the chopping board and I stand up for the other athletes and get annoyed at them because they'd all bitch and complain. I said, if we all stand together, we can make changes. Mm. I said, without us, they don't have a show. This, I understand True. promoters have to make money, but so do we. I said, we're the ones putting our lives on the line, mm. killing ourselves, so just make it fair. Because some contests, like backstage, they wouldn't even have water. Dead and, I, and I'd say, look, we're dehydrated, we need a bit of water. I stopped complaining, and Lee, why are you being difficult? I said, I'm not being... Yeah. Normally, if you weren't dieting for a show, a bottle of water wouldn't mean shit. But when you're at that level of dehydration and mm. your mouth's dry, it's like just a sip of water. It's like, so little things like that, but because I did the PDI, they're like, Lee, that goes against our rules compete with another organization i said wait a minute I said, oh yeah like yes i'm with the rules, ifbb yeah. but i pay for my pro card every year you got to pay for it that's it i said in the contract it says i'm an independent contractor i said you're not paying me to be with you so this organization come along they've got a contest that doesn't conflict with your contest mm. so i'm going to do it if i can make extra money here why not mm. i said if we're going by the rule book you've got convicted felons that's against your rules you've got guys and girls doing pornographic stuff i said why don't they get in trouble oh you're going to be difficult you one year suspension now it's two years i said oh, oh, I really? make it four i don't care but then i started doing a radio show on that radio show i talk about the politics good and bad 
But because I did that, they said, okay, now you're suspended for life. So I'm like, I don't give a shit. So, so 06 I, was my last IFBB show. 010 and that I get, was when I got the lifetime suspension. And then I wasn't going to compete anymore after my grandfather passed away. So for seven years, I didn't do anything. And then 2013, NABBA asked me what I'd be interested in doing the Mr. Universe. I'm like, oh, fuck, I've had seven years off. If I go to NABBA and I go to do the Universe and I don't do well, even if I look great, Mm. Oh, you fucking washed up loser. I was 42 at the time. I'm like, oh, this could end bad. But I went over and won the Mr. Universe. And That's it. Yeah, so that was pretty good. I got in the NABBA Hall of Fame. And so that was good. And then, um, yeah, now I turned 50. Like just two months ago, I just went back to Venice, California and got um, inducted into the Venice Beach Hall of, Hall of Fame. Oh, hectic. So I have a bronze plaque now down there at Venice Beach. Oh, bullshit. Yeah, yeah so hectic. Near Arnold and all them. So I said, oh, isn't that great? I said, tourists will come along and go, fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger, yeah. look at that. Like, it's like the Hollywood Walk of yeah, Fame, yeah, but on yeah, Venice yeah, Beach. Yeah, yeah. Lou Ferrigno, oh my <laughs> God. Who the fuck's Lee Priest? <laughs> <laughs> Google? <Sure>. Hey, <laughs> not, not enough movies. <laughs> no, no. But you, we, what, what, how did that come about? The in the, the I was Hulk doing the photo like, shoot, and they said, "Oh, they're on the way home. Stop at Universal Studios. There's a thing on." I'm like, Ugh. every time you go to something, they always say, "You, you know, when they say they want a bodybuilder, you turn up and oh, you're too big. They just want a guy who's in shape." But I think with a Hulk, they can't say I'm too big. So yeah. I went up there, and there's a few other bodybuilders there, and because I was in contest shape, you could see all the veins, the muscles moving. And Ang Lee, the producer, had one of those suits on with all the motion capture stuff on. Yeah, yeah. It looked so animated. As I was leaving, they go, come here, the stunt coordinator wants to talk to you. He really likes how you look. So I said, we think you got the part. And then like a week or two later, they flew me up to George Lucas's studio in San Francisco, Industrial mm -hmm. Light Magic. And you go in there, it's like, oh, incredible. All these movies from Star Wars. He'll have like a glass cabinet as big as this stage here. Mm. And they've got the Millennium Falcon under it. He's got all the oh, story, like, every, all the shit from his movies. But they take me out to the sound stage out the back where they've got 15 cameras all around me. So everything the Hulk did in the movie, I had to do, yeah. like where he's swinging that tank around, I was swinging around a bag of sand on a piece of rope, yeah. where he's fighting the um, dogs, I'm just slamming bags of sand together. That's smart. So that, all this sort of stuff. Then they took my image, put it in the computer, and then it's built from that. Yeah. And then when the second movie came out with Edward Norton, I did the same thing, but for the video game. Oh, did you? Yeah. And yeah. then I said, I didn't really get into it. I could have gotten the movies more, but I was just like, when I moved back home here, I got on like Rescue Special Ops played a drug dealer in the gym and that. Oh, the gym? Of course, yeah. <laughs> Stereotype. I went to the gym the next day, this old lady's here. She's probably like 70 odd, she trains and I always talk to her. She's like, Lee, I saw you on TV last night. She goes, that's not a very good look for you because you're such a nice guy. Oh, I said, she's it's just a TV show. But then <laughs> I'm good friends with Paul Fennick. I've done a few episodes of Fat Pizza and How's Those yeah, and that. Hectic. Like last season and the season before a fat Peter, I played the white power head of the white supremacist gang. Oh, yeah. Uh, then I walk around well, like in jail or something. No, just out oh, on the streets. The street, yeah. yeah. And that's just funny. When we filmed it that day, I forget what suburb we're in. When I just had a break from filming, me and my friends, they all covered in tattoos too. We just went to the coffee shop and I walk in people. Mm -hmm. I order a coffee. Like, why is everyone fucking staring at me? I'm still wearing my white power t shirt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, fuck, I forgot it on still. I was yeah. like, I just. Yeah, but that was fun. Even walking around Newcastle, people are like, were you on Fat Peach? I'm like, yeah, as they walk off, they're yelling out, white power. And people looking at me like, oh, fuck. <laughs> feeling I'm some Nazi yeah. guy. <laughs> fuck. Yeah, but yeah, it was fun. And then I just did another bit of House Those not long ago. And then I did a small movie called Round Trip. It's on YouTube. I got nominated. I actually got an award for Best Supporting Actor on that. And oh, that's it. I nice. should be set to do a movie next year now. It's meant to be done, but COVID come along. It's going to be a good Australian really? movie. Yeah, hectic. It's a big, oh, big budget one, but yeah, never really got into it. If it comes along, I'll give it a go yeah, type yeah. thing. But why not? Yeah, it's sort of. I said, I don't know. Yeah, they're being fifty now and getting <laughs> getting up there. <laughs> but final question: Who? I know you're very independent, like mm -hmm. you know, and you even like growing up, like you said, you didn't look up to the bodybuilders and stuff like that. Have you had a, the? Who's your biggest mentor? Uh, it was the owner, I can't remember his name, the owner of Gold's Gym. You had a good relationship uh, Ed with Connors. him. Oh, no, Joe Gold. Joe Gold, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah probably him, because he was like, well, I'd say the first one was my grandfather. Yeah, Because yeah, he got me into oh. it, and he was always there and type of thing. But then when I went to America, of course, Joe Gold was older. Yeah. He almost felt like my grandfather. So I always got on better with older people, too, because when I was 13, 14 training, 
a lot of people I trained with were in their 30s, 40s, married. I didn't have yeah. friends my own age, so I always gravitated towards the older people like that. And mm-hmm. World Gym was really good like that because Joe Gold was in a wheelchair towards the end of his life, and I'd always help him go to the store with him and stuff like that. So it was almost like a adopted grandfather type yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Odie was a mad character. Yeah, he, used he to was. go off oh, on people. Oh. <laughs> I remember one time I was out the, on the deck training. He always called me Fat Boy. Hey, Fat Boy, come here. I look in the <laughs> office boy. and there's a guy in there. And this guy who had this piece of metal, it's like a handle here, a pole, and then a step. Yep. He goes, oh, Fat Boy, get on that. Tell me what you think about it. It's like for your calves. Oh, like a calf race. And this guy's trying to sell it yeah. to Joe Gold. But Joe Gold <laughs> makes all his own equipment. He always has all that equipment. You see him pumping iron. He made all that. Oh, that's it, and man. It, it was outside on the deck in the sold air. It's probably the best equipment I've ever used because he knew all the leverage points. You know, some equipment you hop on today, yep. you start and it's easy to yeah, get started. Yeah, yeah, it's hard yeah. to get. And then it's impossible just, at the end. And his yeah. was the same wait the whole way through so this guy's trying this he goes fat boy hop on that i hop on i go up and down on my cars he goes what do you think of that he goes would you use it i'm like probably not he turns around and goes take your fucking piece of shit out of me and the salesman's like i'm like sorry but oh yeah he was like there's no music in the gym if you made a noise like tourists would come in if yeah, they drop the weights, holy Oh, hell. no way. Out in the wheelchair. No music in the gym. <laughs> yeah, his wheelchair fucking comes out 100 miles an hour in the wheelchair with their money. Here's your money now. Get the fuck out. Oh, he was just... Even like Lou Frigno one time, he didn't have his hearing aids in and Lou was yelling, Louie, go home, come oh, back later. Oh, because he's partially <laughs> deaf, eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was funny, though. He was like yeah, a character. Oh, I remember going on plane trips with him because... I'd have to fly with him to like the equipment show, so I'd help him get on the plane. Oh, the way he'd sometimes talk to the hostess on the plane, and but just joking around, yep. you know, like as you get older, yep, you're yep. a cute old man, you get yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Get away with that shit today, yeah. I think. <laughs> <laughs> today you'd be all over Instagram. Oh, because going he, was viral. His, he had like a car too, like a Chevy Tahoe V8, and because he couldn't use his legs, he had a hand control. Uh, getting in the car with him was like taking your life in your own hands. Oh, no oh, way. He God. drove, oh, so he One speed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Joe, I'm going to end up in a fucking wheelchair soon if you keep driving like this. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that, it's always, like I said, the older crowd there was good. Arnold, them, and always sit in the office and talk to Joe about the stories of back in the day of Arnold and yeah. stuff. And what do you think of Arnold? I, I hear heaps of people. Uh, but Arnold's one of those guys, if you know him, like, I mean, he's a jokester. He jokes around. It's like yep. when he was in Governor. He was always getting in trouble, you know, he said girly men once and, yep. oh, he's coming down on gay people. I was like, he's got this real dry sense of humour. Yeah. Even in the gym, he'd always be putting shit on people. And I remember once I was doing leg extensions and he lifts up my shorts. He's like, do you really think you need to keep doing that many and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I lifted up his shorts. I went, yeah, I think I do. Yeah. <laughs> and another time he was standing there with Eddie Giuliani, another good friend of mine. He was in Pumping on. He's the one that jumps in Arnold's arms. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. going to visit Louis. Yep. They were just standing there watching me. And I was training, I just stopped and I looked at him and I said, oh, why do I fucking bother? They're like, what do you mean? I said, I'm training this hard, I'm doing this and that. I said, but in the end, I'm just going to look like you two fucking old guys. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, very funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but no, he's always, if, if you know him, he's good. But then a lot of times people say he's arrogant, but That's he has, what I hear he has so of, many man. people wanting stuff from him, wanting to do stuff. Yeah. So he's very, if he doesn't really know you, he's always, I think he's got that mentality sometimes. What does this person want? So he's sort of, oh, once yeah. you get to know him, then he's just a jokester. He's always putting shit on you and yeah, stuff like yeah, that. Mad, so, yeah, Yeah, so he's really good. Dorian certain, certainly doesn't like him. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, like, it's, it's like I said, you either like, or it's like, I guess it's one of those things, you either like him or you don't. But yeah, yeah but I've always had no problem with He's always been pretty good. Yeah, mad, bro. Yeah, so no, he's a good guy. Yeah, but even Lou, I said Lou is a nice guy. But I think back then too, it was a whole different era. They had that more comradeship in the gym and that. Mm-hmm. Whereas today, I could walk into a gym and, to me, like if you saw a bodybuilder, then you're like, oh, wow, look at him. Wonder what he does. Mm. Now I walk into a gym and it's like, oh, look at this fucking cunt. I'm thinking, wait yeah, a minute. It's like, yeah. why are you hating on me? It's like, you're in the gym training. Yeah. Even when I was like competing still, they look at me like, oh, I'm thinking, you're like, you're trained to be where I am. So yeah. why are you hating on me for? It's like, yeah, true. this whole like, oh, whether it's tall poppy or just this yeah, whole. Definitely yeah, definitely tall poppy. It's just crazy. Yeah. Whereas like. And they used to train together a lot too. Yeah. I think bodybuilders now are very separated. Oh, yeah. yeah. To me, it was like, you know, if you saw the biggest guy in the gym, you'd watch what he did. You maybe go ask him. You could ask someone for a spot. Now, it's like I said, everyone's just so yeah. into themselves and Instagram. And they said, yeah, I remember hey. one guy once who was at the gym, him and his buddies were just fucking around the whole time and taking photos. And I was like, oh, ignore him, Lee. But at the corner of my arm like this. And I saw his post. I think he's like, at the gym, killing it. So I wrote underneath, I fucking saw you didn't do fucking shit. <laughs> and he blocked me. I was like, oh, oh. did he? <laughs> I'm thinking, you know, back in the 80s and 90s, I figured, hey, okay, it's a different time now. But I said, if I did half that shit they do, I said, I would have been dragged out at the gym, punched in the head and said, don't fucking come back. <laughs> you know, but it's a whole different thing. Yeah, definitely. Crazy. Which I, I understand people have different goals and that, but... 
you can still just be you know respectful to other yeah. people and just be nice you're sharing the gym and stuff so to this day i've never asked a person how many sets you got because if i was doing chest and i needed okay i want to do the pec deck someone's on it okay i'll go do flies yeah, number of flies I just because to me like just replace there'll it, be so many pros They'll be like, well, I'm getting ready for Olympia. I need that machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. entitlement, like, eh? Yeah, but okay, you get ready for Olympia. That's important to you, but that woman might want to lose 20 pounds. Yeah. That's just as important to her. So what gives you the right yeah, to the point, fucking bro. machine? Yeah, so good point. I just find that respect and gym etiquette's just gone out the window a lot now, but I guess respect's gone a lot in all walks yeah. of life these days. So. All right, my bar. Thank you. Beautiful. Well, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much. No, nah, but